Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, Boobays is next. What movie? Yeah. Which one? Oh, what movie? Or actually, we're doing our top five horror top movie. Top five. Like, That's moments. why you asked. That's why I asked. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. These guys are fantastic. They are very consistent, and uh, it's a great show. So, um, good luck. Break a leg. Um, why not? To kill somebody. Whatever. Okay. All right. Awesome. Boobays. Hi, you guys. Hi. Hi. And hello. And hello, and welcome to Boobays. That's right. We're your hosts. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Joshua. And today we're going to change things up a bit and talk about our top five. Our top five, which is really hard to narrow down, honestly. That's yeah. why I was like, I have a few honorable mentions. Yes. Okay. I also, because yes. some of my honorable mentions are the ones that are on your list. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and so we're doing top five from movies that we have covered thus far. Um, which so you not already just knew. like all time, but movies that are on our, which we have, I was looking, 87 episodes. We're almost at 100 episodes. That's so much. That's so many. Yeah. That's a lot of movies we've watched. Honestly, it's hard to keep count at this point. I, when <laughs> I was looking back through all of the ones we had covered, I was like, I don't, I don't remember these films. I had to think back a bit and listen to some of them again. Or a lot of them were, I'll remember the movie, but I don't remember the rating. And I feel like oh, when yeah. I look back at it, my ratings change. Yes, or my rating is always, whenever I'm listening to them again, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a lot higher. I'm thinking like 4, 4.5, and then it's like 3. And it's way off from what I would give it now after listening to us talk about it. Because yeah. I was like, that sounded good. Sounds like a good movie. I'd watch that. It just happens, you know? Opinions change. Yeah. Life happens. That's um, true. And then if you don't know, um, <laughs> we rate our our movies from a scale of zero to, or well, one to five, really. Yeah. The, have we given something a zero? I feel like we did one I time. Feel, no. No, we talked about giving something a zero, and we were like, well, what even, this movie would have to be like, uh, just a black screen probably we try to be a little uh, not politically correct but like this, that was someone's artistic expression so like yeah. i don't want to like shit on it all the way but, but sometimes you we know, can shit on them some people just don't have taste that's true mm -hmm. that's true <laughs> well do you want to start us off with maybe your first like or your number five We're do gonna, you have them ranked I think in five. order well i kind of did okay yeah so I, well, i'll start with like the least one mm. and then work our way to number one um so my uh, number five would be the, hopefully y'all have seen it, Carrie, the uh, Carrie prom scene. Classic. Just like the moment whenever she's up on stage, she just won prom queen. She thinks it's like the time of her life. She's been cooped up. Have y'all seen Carrie, by the way? Hopefully. The OG yeah? Carrie. Okay, come on now. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it just, it's really one shocking when the pig's blood just drops all over her. And then it's just, the chaos that ensues, everybody dying essentially. Yeah. And it's honestly Shit hits the fan. Yeah, it does. And Isn't then, there an actual fan? I think that so. Kills the or teacher? they have like stuff like this, like railings know. that comes down. Um, Watch out, y'all! It's gonna happen. <laughs> Be careful. Oh, there is. What is that? <laughs> oh, there's a Mario up there. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, uh. I saw him earlier. <laughs> Shout out to the Mario movie that comes out in a few months. That's a plug. Sponsor us, Mario. We'll Anyways, cover that. Uh, Nintendo. But yeah, so you can, y'all have seen it. Like the whole entire scene. It's just also so good and like such a great feeling. Um, having her get her revenge on mm -hmm. like everybody who was just a bitch to her. They were so awful to her in that oh, movie. Yeah. Like the, the plug it rude. up and the tampons. Yeah. And I mean, I I would kill people. I was after never that bullied too. because I was like really popular in school and stuff. <laughs> oh, but nice. I'm totally kidding. I was, <laughs> I was a band nerd and like 
Yeah, I, I got too. I got bullied. <laughs> yeah. And I'm part of the LGBTQ plus AI, uh, you know, Y through Z. So, you know, being, I think I was like, honestly, the only gay guy at my school. Uh, well, no, I wasn't. At the time. But like, you know, like people who was out. out. Yeah. yeah. So that gave room for a lot of people to be mean to me. But, um, oh, and I was like percussionist in band, but like I played the bells. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like playing the cymbal. <laughs> Like all the extra shit because like I was I I wasn't the most avid band member. I just really like band because you could go to the football games and it gave you an excuse to like not be home and you can be with your friends. That's true. Yeah. That's why I still do band. <laughs> you do. <laughs> uh, and if y'all don't know, Caitlin is a color guard ist or a color In- guard. Yeah, instructor? color guard instructor. Yeah. yeah. So mm, but, still still do it. Yeah. Fifteen years later. <laughs> And then uh, thinking back to Carrie, I mean, if y'all want to go back and listen to the episode, we talk about so much more in depth. But yeah, that that would be my top five. Yeah. So, okay. That's your number five. Mm, here. Yeah. I don't know if I necessarily have mine ranked. Um, okay. Yeah. I think we'll start with this one. This one's a little bit more of an obscure mm. film. It's, it's a Korean film called The Medium. We covered this film. Um, I don't know if this necessarily qualifies as a like death but it's a scene that really really traumatized me when we watched it it oh god Mm. so trigger warning animal abuse um the scene where okay Mm. we have this woman her name's noe and she's going through a possession she's being possessed and she is just unraveling and the most bizarre stuff is happening and we get to a point where she cooks the family dog boils it alive and you can hear the dog it's really graphic screaming. it's so yeah. graphic it's like have you ever seen but it people stuck put with me crabs in a pot of boiling water but like a dog it was a dog yeah and then she was eating it right yeah yeah she like yeah. pulled it, it it was that scene was fucked up and it fucked me up but like that kind of goes with like also in like i feel like it because it was Korean horror, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, Korean horror just, like, really good. Actually, there. no, it was not Korean. Was it? I am a liar. <gasps> I believe it was... Was it Thai? Thai. It was Thai. <laughs> I think That's you watched right. that with me. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking of... <laughs> but it is... So, okay, not Korean. Thai. And just bizarre, though. But that scene really does, like, that, that sticks with you. Because yeah. Because of how, like, graphic it is. But also, like... Shout out to the dogs that are in horror films because, like, if they you're ever a dog in a horror film, like, you get one check and it's very little because you're out. Like, Except they're for always what, dead. What movie they get did, killed. Oh, the dog in, um, what's that movie where they, the little kids got. Hmm. Which one? They're, oh, Mama. Oh, Mama. Yeah, the little dog, the little mama. meaner dog. Yeah. He lived a big, healthy life. Because he some of them boy. make it. Depends on who's writing, I guess. Yeah. If it was me writing, I would save the dog. Yes, but yeah. this dog only did the not dog. Make it. Only the dog. Only the dog. Everyone else Ryan, dies. you're dead. Dog lives. <laughs> uh, JK, Kira would I'm make kidding. it. She's um, cutthroat. Kira would. She would. Um, but yeah, so top five, top four. Yeah, I think that would be my it. like five, just because mm. it was that whole movie. Every mm. turn that it took, you were like, "This can't get any worse," and then it yeah. did. And then it blew your mind at a whole nother level, and you were just like, what is going on? And, I mean, it keeps you engaged. It's a rather long movie. I believe it was, like, two hours long, almost. And the whole time, though, you're, like, completely pulled in. So but some I of thought those it was movie, great. Yeah, I was about to say that, piggybacking on that. Like, some of the movies are able to just, like, keep your attention the whole time. Yeah. Um, makes an hour or two hours go by really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and segueing into our fourth my top four, I guess, the fourth one would be, it's not necessarily, like, the most horrific or, like, scary moment, but it's actually really funny. It's in Friday the 13th. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's whenever, so we, I honestly hadn't seen it in a really long time. I saw it when I was, like, a kid, I think, but even in the end, it was only coming in pieces. So when we had to rewatch it, um, it's a phenomenal film. Like, it's very good. Uh, cool classic obviously and what it's like created it's inspired a lot of things there's so many references um but like because of the time and age i guess back then like some of those kills were just like really funny because there's this one part where we have um 
uh, spoiler alert, you think it's not Jason, it's Mrs. Voorhees who's the killer, and she is about to ax someone, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I forget the character's name, but she ends Alice, up... Alice, I believe. Alice? Maybe. Is this, it gives... Is this the last scene, right? Um, no, no. It's no. The, the girl who's in the, like, the... Um, stall she's looking for her boyfriend oh, uh, and she's about right. to like going into the showers looking that's and right. she turns around and it just like freezes on her <laughs> and then it fades away and you're just left to only imagine that she got axed but it's the just the ending scene too is also pretty comical like whenever um i believe mrs Voorhees gets killed it's, and she's fighting with yeah, and her um, head just like <laughs> it just gets popped off as it Gets well, chopped off for her. It's very. It fun. was the '70s, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. So the effects, the effects weren't like you know what we're used to nowadays. Um, but that for me is also like I guess it wasn't necessarily what it was supposed to be because it wasn't supposed to be. I don't think com- comical, but like just also as well. Like there's so many times in horror movies where like you need the levity of some comedy or something to kind of like pull you through it. Yeah. Um, which and sometimes some movies overdo the comedy part, mm-hmm. but. Um, yeah, I, I know we've talked about that a lot mm-hmm. with like Get Out and most of Jordan Pill's films, how mm-hmm. he uses comedy correctly. Yeah, thankfully. I was about to say, wait, what? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> he does. He does a very great job of finding that happy medium where you get mm-hmm. like a perfect little bit to just take off the edge of the yeah incredibly just well, messed up it, stuff you just witnessed. It's smart humor as well. Yeah, it's fundamentally based with some kind of logic or truth behind it mm-hmm. most of the time, or it's satire. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. What's your four? Okay, mine are all just things that traumatize me, I guess. Um, <laughs> I guess my next one is from another film that we covered called The Canal. Um, I remember that one. Yes. It was It was a surprisingly, like, I had never really heard of it. I think it was just mm-hmm. on Shudder. It was during our month I, of Shudder. I Shutter. picked it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what, yeah, you called it The Canal. The Canal. <laughs> canal. Um, <laughs> on paper, look at it. The Canal. The Canal. Uh, but so this obviously this film takes place around a canal like a waterway Um, but it also has to do a lot with like the birthing canal and many other forms of canals yeah which it's really only those two so I don't know why I said that sentence but (laughs) the scene where this now this was beautiful beautiful like I actually listened back to the episode a bit today and was like we were cheering Mm -hmm. whenever the scene came up because it was the scene where um, he is trying to show Claire those photos on like, and it's so basically it's like a projector screen and they're looking at this film that had been developed and he had kind of lost his shit because that's what he's going through in the film and he punches a hole in the wall and finds like some other stuff in there. But so this hole is in the wall And as you're watching these photos develop, each one, there's this figure that's emerging and coming closer and closer to you. And soon enough, you realize this figure is actually materializing and it's coming through the hole in the wall. And the way that she just emerges, it was chef's chef's kiss. kiss. It was beautiful. And also simultaneously, the most terrifying thing. (laughs) If, If that happened to me, I would... Like, please kill me now. I'm shit a brick. That's S- terrifying. Super inspired by, like, Ringu, you know? And, like, yes. Samara coming through the, the TV television. screen and stuff. But, like, that's what it gave. But yeah, I remember, too. Yeah. That was It was terrifying. Because, you know, in movies, they build up the tension. They build up the sound, the effects. The, and this, the, this film had a wonderful soundtrack as well. I do remember that. And kind of a lack thereof at some yeah. points, which we know, if, if you've listened to the podcast, you know I'm a fan of. And when you don't lean on it too much. And this one did a really good job of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it also so kind of lumped in with that at the end when everything's just going bonkers. He and his son are trying to escape through said canal. And they come across his deceased wife, who we have found out that he has murdered, um, in because she was cheating and was apparently pregnant. So this is another part where the birthing canal comes in. Family drama. Yes, a little bit. And she, this like bloated corpse of his wife, it, obviously it's an apparition, it is not truly his wife, um, is then giving birth to, and you witness a birth, which if you know anything about me, I am terrified, terrified. of pregnancy and the whole birthing process is disgusting to me. Um, 
not, I mean, kudos to everyone who has children, but it really freaks me out. <laughs> yeah, different Would strokes for different 1,000% get a surrogate if possible? Um, but that... And you wouldn't even be present in the room when it's happening. No. You'd just be like, let me know when it's done, text me. Yeah, or like I would be up above the top of the sheet thing. Like, you know, I'll be On the, the other side. I'll be the dad that's like feeding ice chips Shaking. or something. <laughs> that's not... Okay. That's not actually witnessing. But this scene, you witness a like weird demon baby get birthed and... Terrifying. I mean... It was. I, it's really good effects. Really good was. practical effects. It looked. I thought they found someone to give birth on television. I yeah. don't know. I was very shocked. <laughs> um, but it, it was good, and it that also stuck with me. Everything is just. And I remember the viscous, like the viscous. I think that's the word, like ooze viscous. coming out of it too. Oh I yeah, there's a lot of. I don't know if it was the evil placenta or what. But yeah. Evil placenta. <laughs> and then even before that, no, this movie actually, now that you're bringing it up, there's so many good mo- moments in this movie. There really was. This was the one where I was like, when we were listening, when I was listening back to it, I was like, oh, yeah. 4.5. And then my motherfucker was like, 3.5. And I was like, what? Mm. What? Because I remember the I scene. I got mad at myself. He was um, like in this like public restroom thing area. Yeah. And you just see like these hands start Ooh, to come up over the stall. So but it's like, long hands and fingers yeah. um and it's just super creepy and it's just oh. like one again once again those moments where like everything's building up and then it's just can, like can we lead into an honorable mention from that go shoot this Halloween. is your show whenever he drops the teeth over the fucking stall and uh which was that halloween on, on was it the re- three halloween kills or was it halloween kills no that's halloween halloween no, it's one of the remakes. Whenever he gets out of the asylum with the podcasters. That's the first one, Halloween. Like okay. Just Halloween. But it's Halloween 2018. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I meant. Sorry, yes, I yes. thought you were trying to say no, the original. No, not the original. Like, no, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was not in that one. <laughs> this is why we shouldn't name movies the same name. Yeah, it's very confusing. <laughs> Scream, Scream 2022. Yeah, can't handle that. Both amazing movies. Too much. Mm-hmm. But that, that had to be an honorable mention for me. That was savage. Yeah. That he just... Yeah, homeboy just gets all these teeth and he drops it over the stall. Talk about like scaring someone. Oh, well, I also have like these reoccurring nightmares where all my teeth fall out. Yeah, me too. Well, I had one one time where my teeth fell out, but like I was laying in bed. Maybe it was also a bit of like what is it called when you're yeah. sleep paralysis? Yeah. But like my mouth was filling up with blood, and like I couldn't spit the teeth out, and it just kept filling and filling. You know that moment where like. I felt like my face was going to explode. Ugh. Thankfully, Were you, didn't. like, choking, too? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, that's good. Mm, no. I, I hope that not. Really I was scary. asleep, so. See, mine are just weird. Like, mine will fall out, and then they'll turn into, like, cotton, and I have to collect mm. them from, like, in the couch and stuff and put them back oh, in my mouth. Oh, that's very um, weird. Uh, get out. Get out. Oh, Remember? yeah, Remember, yeah. he has to get the cotton out yeah. of the, the church seams. Okay, yeah, anyways. If, if you're like me, I found out I have a lot of nightmares, but we've pin the dots that it's because I usually watch all the horror movies right before bed and so <laughs> they like bleed into my dreams um Love but, it. that's yes. the best way to go to sleep um I, you ready for my three I am because I'm ready for my three <laughs> um has anybody seen the movie The Strangers oh yeah The Strangers yes okay mm. Mm. Mason yeah. it's, it's 2006 I believe but it's like one of those movies when I watched it um kind of um set like my love for horror kind of little uh, what's the word it ticked the little interests you know oh yeah Pete. I, I grew Pete. up in a house like that was very like you know we love the lord we don't watch those kind of movies you know i mean you can still love the lord and watch those movies but mm. in our house they just didn't um and so it was very strict so i would always go to like my cousin's place and watch movies and we watched the strangers and it just kind of like the the moment that i'm speaking of is uh, basically setting it up is just there's this couple, they go to a cabin in the woods and some people pop up and basically just want to harm them. Uh, but they like toy with them the entire time leading up to them actually murdering them. So the moment is like, there's Liv Tyler, she's in the kitchen and you just see this dude with a kind of, what is that corn? Like potato pus- sack. Potato sack mask and he's potato behind her. Man. And we as the audience can see him, but she obviously can't. And he's just there for the longest time getting closer and closer and she's just like washing a dish 
And then as soon as she kind of turns around because she feels something in the room, he's gone. And it's like, I have that moment at least five times every other day. <laughs> so I like to sometimes imagine that I'm Liv Tyler in The Strangers. But um, that moment for me was just like it, the tension that it built. And then throughout the whole movie, like this poor couple was just getting like messed with. Like in the most like way that I sometimes would be like, that would be really fun to do some to someone. But like, I know I wouldn't. But um, it's it's like sadistic. This was one this was the one I was talking about that this was my like an honorable. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's and just the whole ending scene there as yeah. well. Um mm. I mean, can this be both of our threes? You did that scene, I'll do the ending scene. Yeah, it could okay, be. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that that ending scene and the whole idea that really they made it through the night. They made it through the hardest part and the scariest part. But they got to the next day in broad daylight, these people mur- that's when they yeah. finally get murdered. And that whole idea that like daylight can save you, you just gotta make it through the night, it was shattered in that instance, and that was beautiful and honestly terrifying. And the masks were so simple in that film, yet like I've I i do not know if I've seen anything scarier. Oh, and even their their answer, remember, because Liv asks, why are you doing this to us? And they just say, because, because you were home. home. So it's just like, yeah. yeah. Kind of like the worst of humanity, which in itself is like even scarier than a ghost story or something else. Because and it's like, stuff that happens all the time. Like, could bloody be your happy hour is going to talk about, like, murder is a very real thing. Could it's, be Caitlin. It could be me. I'm the murderer. <laughs> or you're killing me. Mm. Because you would probably be the murderer. We could take turns. Okay. <laughs> You're going first. <laughs> to die? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. But I'm a Capricorn. Sally taught us mm. that we live, except for in the new fucking, oh, the new Text Chainsaw Mask for y'all. That's a dishonorable mention. Yeah, right on there. Netflix, we, yeah. Uh, we're not even covering it. No. No. Garbage. Mm-hmm. Only covered the original, which, shout out to Caitlin, who got me the shirt, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's so cute. It's really cute. Oh, yeah, um, and you can see my boobies. So uh, <laughs> we, um, <laughs> I guess I'll go to number two. Two, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, so my number two top uh, in the top five moments um, would be uh, a movie from, uh, from a movie called Sinister. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily like I would say. I feel like it's not a. Lo- I feel like it's kind of a split. I hear a lot of people that actually like it, and a lot of people that maybe don't like it. But I really liked it, mm-hmm. and there's a moment in it where. Um, essentially this dude who is uh, a writer is trying to put together a mystery, uh, solve a case and he's looking into this uh, demon entity deity uh, whose name is Bagul and he has a photograph of him and he's looking at it real close at night by the way he's like three whiskeys in because every scene you see him in this film he's drinking yes, drinking, drinking Um, and so, which I guess you would have to to cope with like the most, he's he's a murderer, like True crime writer. True crime yeah. writer. Yeah, there and you he's go. his books have actually like solved cases, mm-hmm. and I think I believe they helped someone who was supposed to be a victim or yeah. trapped or something. But just essentially really heavy shit. So it's just like the whiskey helps him. But he's looking at the photograph and the uh, deity Bagul is in the photograph, and like it ends up like switching from that into Bagul being into like the bushes and the trees outside, like in his like. Uh, backyard Mm -hmm. Uh, but it just happened so fast and they really do in this movie too build up the tension and the release of like you know giving you a long eerie like situation and then bam you get a little jump scare yeah and I'm kind of a sucker for a jump scare I I jump whenever there's no scare happening I just jump (laughs) Um, most of the times because I'm like waking up because I'm always like half asleep but um (laughs) Bagul's it's just terrifying. so scary, Bagul, and Bagul kind of stuck with me for a while. Like, I honestly had, like, nightmares of Bagul. Like, sleep paralysis dreams where I'd just be laying there, and he's just, like, looking over my shoulder, just, like, casually, just looking at me through the whole night. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. He just wanted some cuddles. And there's so many moments in that movie. Like, it's so good. If y'all haven't seen it, Sinister, the first yes. one, good. The second one. Not as much. They tried to lean too much into what they did in the first one. Yeah. They, and, they definitely didn't yeah. go as well. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. Um, okay. So my number two. Oy. Okay. I was stuck between two, what to make two and one. I think I'm going to go with Halloween, the OG. Mm. It's a good movie. And the sheet scene, like where he, so 
the kill that happens downstairs beforehand when Glass's dude goes down mm -hmm. to get a drink or whatever, and you just see the like pure brute strength that Michael has when he just lifts this grown ass man up with one hand and then also breaks his neck while holding him up there. And doesn't he, he impales him on something too, doesn't I he? I wish a man would do that to me. Yeah, for real. Um, <laughs> Robbie's like, what the hell? Um, <laughs> but that, that kill was just awesome. And then yeah. the scenes that lead into that, like after there, so we get the ghost scene where then he puts like just a bed sheet over him and the like iconic the glasses, glasses yeah. over it. And I feel like that's probably one of the most memorable, memorable parts of Halloween, mm -hmm. I would argue. Um, There's so many moments, but that is a top one. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was just awesome. And then the way that he goes to then like set up all of the bodies afterwards yeah. and we get Michael's true like artistic touch yes, <laughs> through super all of sadistic. his murders. Because <laughs> he like essentially kills all of um, Strode, Lori, Lori's yeah. friends and then just like sets them up around the house so she can like find them. Little, like little presents. Yeah, little gifts. So nice. Um, really Here traumatizing yeah. for Lori. Fuck you right up. Yeah. But uh, poor friends, you know? Yeah. I mean, they really got the shit end of the stick. They did. They got murdered real good. But I, I think that has to be up there as one of the mm -hmm. kind of most iconic that I can pick out of films that we've covered. Well, Michael so Myers in itself. I mean, yeah. that's so iconic. We There's love Michael. There's so many references to Michael Myers. There's so many, like, pop culture, the films that it's, like, created, that this is, like, amount of fran the franchise, you know? Yeah. Um, and even all the remakes. Um you can't go through the month of October without seeing him at least once. Even nice. at like, I mean, unless you had like just blinders on. Go to Hot Topic. You see him all year round. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. um, What's your number one? Oh, number one already. So my number one um, from listening to the podcast, if y'all know, maybe um, my favorite scary movie is Scream, the 1996 film. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Oh, he don't agree? Oh, well, um, scream. Uh, because I, it, <laughs> it um, was essentially, I don't know, I just, I really loved it. I, I Going back, also, uh, I believe for some reason, I don't know why, I think they thought I was still too young. It was my dad and someone else, and I think it's always my cousins. My cousins are always involved. But they took me to the theater to go watch it whenever it came out. And I was, I was 96. I was born in 94, so I think... I don't even know how I remember, but I just remember Ghostface. Maybe it's, I don't know how, but um, the mo the moment that I'm talking about is literally the opening, and it's with Drew Barrymore. I think everybody's seen it. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, it's her. She gets a phone call, and it's like the classic babysitter at home, but actually she's not babysitting anybody. She's just at home, but she gets that phone call, and he's just like wanting to talk to her. She thinks it's probably some, you know, scammer or some creepy guy it's the 90s so a i guess people call. yeah people got prank calls all the mm -hmm. time and of course it's Ghostface, and he's asking her what her favorite scary movie is and then making her feel really scared and unsafe in her own home and then it's the whole i guess kind of cat and mouse situation uh, up until uh ghost face pops up and starts terrorizing her through her own home we've her got the popcorn burning insane. we've got her then finally going running out and getting chased down and getting stabbed and if you do remember it, but maybe don't remember it, it's probably because you saw, saw Scary Movie, because Scary Movie recreated it with Carmen Electra, I think that's what it was. I um, am very guilty of getting Scream and Scary <laughs> Movie confused. I thought there were so many things that were going to happen when we rewatched Scream, and I was like, nope, oh, nope. that was Scary that Movie. That was the spoof. Totally Scary Movie did not happen. Yeah, but there's actually so... Okay, so let's just go to the list through honorable moments. They're all from Scream. The next, the, my next moment is, um, and it's honorable, I guess, is Tatum, her death scene. Oh, yeah. Because she's a uh, garage, it's a uh, party setting. She's in the garage getting some more beers. And uh, whenever she goes in there, she ends up running into Ghostface. And they have this kind of interaction. Or she's Very like, similar to oh, how in Halloween with the glasses mm, oh, and the sheet. True. Whenever he comes back up, she thinks it's her boyfriend. Yeah. And so she's being very like playful with him. And then he's like, die, bitch. Yeah, because she like what happens here. starts. She he's uh, roots or dices up her arm, not stabs, but mm. he scratches her arm up, which later becomes kind of a trope in all the screen movies. Whoever gets their arm diced up is either um, 
like about to die or is like some red herring kind of situation. Yeah, they they played on that in the second one. Mm-hmm. And I think even in the new one that came out too, the 2022 oh, yeah, yeah. one. Um, but we have Tatum uh, trying to get away from Ghostface and she ends up going through, not the smartest thing, the little like cat door. It's not even a dog door. Yeah, it's like it's a kitty It's really probably door. one of the dumbest things you could do, actually. Uh, goes through it and Ghostface ends up like pushing the garage door to open and she gets like, yeah, just kind of crushed in the middle of the garage door. Yeah. Um, which is really great. It was. For us, not for Tatum. No. Yeah. That was a really awesome scene. A very good death. Mm -hmm. Oh, Scream is so good. I wasn't a like I wasn't as big of a fan until we went back and covered them again, and then I was like, one, two, three, this four, is five, amazing. Yeah. Sorry, I disagree, Robbie. Um, <laughs> um, what's your number one? So my number one, I think that the one that I think stuck with me the most throughout my childhood was probably the Ring. The Ring. The American. Oh yeah, yeah, version. yeah. 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 So we did cover Ringu as well, and that was incredible. And I think I did give it a higher rating than mm -hmm. I did The Ring. But The Ring has a lot of nostalgic stuff for me. And I think that whole, that whole introductory scene where we get the cousin. Yeah. And it's all coming back to yeah, me. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. having that sleepover with one of her best friends. And we find out that, you know, she had gone to the, the cabin and stuff and seen mm -hmm. all those things. And her... Just her face whenever you finally get her unveiling of her body in the in the closet. Yeah. That shit scarred me for life. Because they only show up for like a split, like five seconds. Yeah. That. It's but just like Wah! it's enough. Yeah. But it, it it's terrifying. And then that film, I know we talked about it whenever we covered this film, like on the podcast, but whenever that movie came out, there were a bunch of prank calls going around at the time of like people calling your house randomly and just saying like seven days. And the moment, it was just such beautifully timed. I don't know who the fuck did it, but it mm -hmm. terrified me at least for a week because the me. moment the film ended at my house, my phone rang and I, it was one of those prank calls. And I answered the phone and it said seven days. And I was like, that's it. I've just killed myself, killed my little brothers. We're gonna die. and. <laughs> Family mass suicide. Yeah. I was like, I made them watch it. Now their blood is on my hands. Oh, God. Oh, it was terrible. And I was like in the first grade or something. But that whole movie, yeah. I remember watching that back in the day. Uh, the Ring and I believe The Grudge were like one of those type mm. of those movies um, that really stuck with me. Like yeah. where it's like, you're like, I was like this watching. Even going back and I'd seen The Ring probably like 15 times or something. It felt like, and then going back and watching it again, there were some moments where I was like, I don't know if I really want to see this. I'm yeah. a little scared. Well, it's because it's so much different too. Like as we watch them for the podcast, we go in with like a more analytical lens. So it's just mm. like you either see things or feel things that you didn't like really sense before. There was a lot mm -hmm. of symbolism in that movie. Yeah. Like I, once we actually watched it from that kind of lens, I was like, I have to give this film more props than I actually intended to. Mm -hmm. because they really thought this shit out. I mean, of course, the Ringu, like, Ringu really laid all of that groundwork, but I feel like the American version also just maybe almost a little too much overboard with, like, the circular mm -hmm. symbolism throughout everything in the oh, film. Oh, yeah, and that um, gray color scale yeah, that they were that, using. Yeah, that was not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you mentioning that. Yeah, but overall, I think I think that face there was probably one of the most... Like, ugh, makes my skin crawl. And then you, like, fast forward, and then you have Samara coming out of the TV screen. Yeah. Yeah. These are all very iconic moments that, like, even, like, people who don't happen to watch horror movies, like, I feel like would know. I feel like, mm -hmm. and whenever, so my, my brothers had some sort of, you know, like, one of those, it was kind of, it was a video game thing where you, like, it videoed you, and it put you in the video. Like a virtual reality? Almost? Yeah, but, like, way before actual mm -hmm. virtual mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. And so it was, like, it just kind of put you on the screen. It was like a green screen thing. I don't know, it put you in. But this little camera also worked and they would put it outside their room as like, um, mm. who's coming into our room kind of thing. And so then one time to fuck with them, I dressed up as, as Samara because Samara, I had really like long, dark brown hair as a kid. And I just got some like white tattered rags and flipped my hair over and was like soaked and was like, 
<laughs> towards that camera. Mm-hmm. They came out of the room screaming. Love it. I would have beat you up. So much trauma yeah. from everyone. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, little brothers. <laughs> I never had one. Always wanted one. Oh, no, you don't. Hmm. I'm just kidding. They're fine. It's too late now. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. But um, yeah. So that's your number one? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Mm. It was it was hard to pick. Throughout everything, there were so many, there's so many awesome movies that we've covered. We have too many episodes this very long time now and so like many more to go 87 was shocking yeah i know there's so many films that i want to cover still too yeah and we've not even gotten close to so it's i'm excited me too um and then just i wanted to honorable mention another one yes. signs if nobody's seen it which is a future episode that we're yes. going to be covering um because we do take listener requests and this one was actually requested by our awesomest listener not awesome sorry a really awesome listener named Andrew. And it's also our anniversary today. So Aww, shout out Andrew. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> um, and so this moment here. in scene, <laughs> signs for me at least, because I watched it in the theater with my, with my two other sisters and um, whenever it came out, so I was still pretty young. And it's whenever this alien just walks past the camera as all the little boy, like it's a little boy's birthday party and he walks past the camera and you don't even like see it really. It's like raw footage. Mm. Um, and it's just, I don't know why, it just gave like scared the crap out of me. Yeah, signs scared me as a Whoa, yeah. Oh sorry, then I just thought of the sixth sense. Oh. And that mm-hmm. scene That's with the one. little girl under the bed throwing up. I, for the longest time I thought she was eating a rat. Um oh. but she was puking because her mom like overdosed Would feed her. Feed her the poison yeah. like pine saw. Yeah. Anyways, that's a great movie. We so should cover that. That's what we do is we spend time covering the most gruesome and horrible things that could ever happen to you. Yeah. So, but it's a lot of fun. Terrifying. Because it happens in movies. It's and not true. In real, well, yes. It does happen in real life. I was like, like mm. not real life, but we do cover <laughs> movies that are based on real life. So, JK. Uh, art imitates life and life imitates art. That's right. Mm-hmm. But as always, thank you for listening to us today, you guys. Yeah. I've been Joshua. This has been Caitlin. Um, we... Um, I'm so used to doing our sign off. Yeah. Wow. Uh, obviously, we're with Rogue Media. Yeah. Um, and we're so grateful that they put this on and have given us this opportunity to talk and yeah. talk at y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And we, as always, you can find our podcast and other podcasts at roguemedianetwork.com. That's and right. if you want to follow us and like get into the mix, listen to our podcast, you can follow us at our podcast, our Instagram. That's and right. It's at Boobay's Podcast, B O O B A B. At ES because we're your boo babes, not your boo babes. Yes. Oh, I think I got that backwards. It was no, I think you did it right. I, think I did it maybe right. Maybe there was an extra B in there though. It's okay. I don't know. Y'all know. <laughs> My brain's not reliable, but yeah, you can always let reach out to us. Let us know which horror yeah. films are your favorite or which ones you don't like. We did have one of the listener requests we covered was of a film that someone was like. She totally shit on it. She hated it. Yeah. And but she that was so fun it. for us to do yeah. because we also hated it. And Sometimes so, it's really fun to just talk crap about a really bad yeah. thing. Yeah. So we, we do all the things. So if you want to let us know, just reach out to us on there or come up to us right now and talk to us about your favorites. And if you want us to cover your episode, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So until next time. Bye, Bays. Bye, Bays. <laughs> So, Caitlin came in and she was all rushed I was um, because she thought the show was at five. And it's probably my fault, not hers. But how good a job did she do for somebody who was so rushed? I mean, she did such a good job, right? Yeah. Give her another. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You're not supposed to applaud for yourself. Um, these, these are two of my favorite people in the world. Um, they do a really good job of putting together a really thoughtful show. And I think that is uh, the consistency and the fact that you actually think about it before you do it. Because we've done shows that we didn't think about before. Yeah. And so um, I just want to thank both of you for continuing to do your show and uh, continuing to put out stuff that people like. And so uh, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. I really appreciate them. So thanks, guys. All right.
And now, a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back.